You did, did, but I think our plan was to right. leave town so that we can speak speak and buy the boat as our original right. selves, rather All than right. All right. Okay. We're down down to rather than uh, in the fantasy equivalent of Trump hats and yeah. jeans. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. So what is uh, so you guys are gonna leave town? You're gonna what? And We're gonna head to. Head to uh, Port Lost. No, right now you're gonna leave town. Yeah. And come back in and buy a boat. No, no we're gonna go down to Port Walk down. To Port okay. Lost. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. Ah, now I get. Now I remember. Okay, good. I'll go back to that map. I'm not on that map. Okay, and uh, but uh, Peter is busy at the moment. So, what would you like to do? Have him catch up with you? Yeah, or? he'll he'll catch up to us. He has he has ways of traveling. He's got a good feeling about this date, so it happens yeah. sometimes. He's gonna show up a couple of days early. That's good. Or you can get on a faster well, boat. He knows where we're going. All right. So, um, when you guys are heading out of town. Uh, a young sort of, eh, I'd say for this town, dirty man runs up to you and he says, sir, sirs, you're leaving already? But it's not anybody you've seen before. Uh, insight check. What What's up with this weird guy? Uh, roll of insight. He's about, I don't know, 13 years old. Uh, he reminds you so much of of Mr. Mister, mm -hmm. uh, but he's saying sir, sir, and he's definitely a different person with different hair. And he's like, "Hey, hey, are you are you sure you want to leave? You know, I mean, the party's just getting started." Actually, I say to him as I lean in, "I have a message I want you to deliver to," and I give him the description of a place uh, on the far side of town, and yeah. I make up a totally uh, like nothing message so that he goes away to deliver it. Okay, do you want to send him to the to the Overpriced magic shop guy? Uh, yeah, anywhere that's far away from us. Doesn't. Oh, I just thought that would be fun for Drew. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've been to the overpriced magic shop guy, and I give him a, a very cryptic sounding, very clearly like magic hiding riddle that uh, means nothing at all and is complete bullshit. All right. He is very attentive and happy for. Uh, he says, "Oh, that's that's a long message." I give him, off, I give him the, the full gold and okay. say, have at it. Very happy, and he, he runs, and he says, but but don't miss the party. Of course, I away. say, and then we leave the party. I say? Uh, any, <laughs> any minute. <laughs> we invited all the strangers in town. Didn't you guys hear about it? No. Did you guys hear about a party? Nope. Did we hear about a party? Did you hear about any party? No. And he runs on. So, anyways, I say I want to see if we can get a vantage point to see if anything's about to go down. I'd like it maybe somewhere. Up I was gonna say, can you just, just climb on the a building, team. maybe? Well, the main building you can climb and would be your hand stick to walls. Yeah. Being a lizard. Well. Oh, Frankfurt, can't you go invisible? Frankfurt, you go off. Morgan Frankfurt turned into a bird? That's what I th <laughs> thought. You're a turtle. Bye. I mean, the only tall buildings are at the front here, so. And and the battlements, but they have people on them usually, like, just sparsely. Well, can you turn into a bird and keep the surveillance while we uh, walk around the outside? I can't. Oh, my animal sheep won't come up. I can turn into hmm. animals. I can try to turn into a bird. No 
wizards or warlocks. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, actually, uh, Chris, can I use my Tides of Chaos ability to give her a second roll that she can choose between the two of? Yeah. Have you ever even used that? I've used it, like, once to get advantage, but that... And it's on you to... I, I guess we had that. First time of the day. So yeah, roll again and choose. Now you gotta roll the search table. Oh. Oh, so like, the way it works is, uh, or, oh, you can, you want me to roll it on it right away, or? No, I mean, I, I was more of it beforehand. I um, have turned into a spider. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're at 80. Yeah, that works. A, a bird did not want to come up, so I am now a spider. Regular sized spider? Yep. Does anybody know where you are? <laughs> I assume in the turtle shaped space where you she just used disappeared, to be? and then, yeah, once you look real close, so, yeah. I just kind of. <laughs> I, uh, look at Jeroen, like, climb up him and be like, <laughs> this bird didn't work in my <laughs> mind. I'm like, bird did not work. <laughs> can you change back at will? Yeah, I can. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. I had to make a wisdom saving throw. And if I failed, I would have turned into a wolf, but I passed. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody noticed. <laughs> but thanks for telling us, Spence, because other like we can't tell when you stop yourself from transforming into a wolf. Or you, yeah. over you just see me get a little bit hairy for half a second and it goes away. Balding kind of grows a, 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 an afro for a second and it just kind of Falls off. <laughs> um, we had an interesting few days while looking seemingly normal, and now it seems everyone's ready to let their freak flag fly again. It's June. I pretty arbitrarily re re um, ruled that the seed survives the tra other transformation, which doesn't fit the D rules about morphing, but. <laughs> <laughs> You would find after a while, anybody focus their account on it, that the seed actually changed you. It's not just an illusion. Except for your, except for your bites, mm -hmm. your legs, your horrible gouges in your legs. So Frankfurt tries again to turn into a bird, and I turn into a giant elk. Can you bugle? So you now have a giant elf right beside you. Yep. So a giant elf appears beside yeah. you. It seems pretty content. We, a giant elk appears beside you. We look content. at the elk confused. It makes a noise. <laughs> there is an elk. <laughs> Like a hay pitch bugle. It still hasn't climbed any buildings or flown over the town. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Not really sure what's happening there with that. Um, you're definitely you're getting some weird looks, but you're surprisingly like just the random people that aren't too close are not panicked at all. <laughs> yeah. They know what world, what world they live in. Yeah. So uh, you're he you're heading out of town to rock walk to Port Last. So you're gonna meet up with Fido there. 
Yeah. Uh, well, we're going to catch a boat, and then Peter will catch up whenever okay. he gets bored. So you're going to meet with him at... All right. Thornhold, then. Okay. So I'm going to message him, too. He was asking what was up, so... All right, so you guys head out of town. Uh, the guards sort of look at you. Uh, what about the elk first? Are you going to go out of town as an elk? Yep, I'm just going to follow this group as an elk. <laughs> I'm going to jump on his back. All right, I was going to say, anybody really want to put a rope on or something, but that'll do. <laughs> All right, uh, do you allow Fastball to drive you? You allow Sorry? You allow Spalding to ride you? Yep. Okay. It's a pretty common mount people like to choose in TNT. <laughs> how long yeah, will you be how long, how long will you be an elk? I can be up to five Not hours. Long. Cool. <laughs> Alright, you guys and your elk are walking along getting some more looks than you you did when the first transformation happened because Spalding is Spalding, Spalding is seeming normal, but riding an elk. <laughs> yep. And as soon as we're out of sight, I assume you un-elk and we get somewhere private and turn back into our normal selves. Well, that'll just happen on its own. We could just start walking. Yeah, but we don't want someone to see us do it. In case yeah, so happens. just walk in town. Like oh. we can walk, uh, walk down the road for a bit and turn off. And so. about half right. the time, you will find that you are like within sight of somebody. It's a fairly busy road at the moment. It's middle afternoon. Not bad. Like just fairly random. Right now, you see two guys. They're definitely farmers. Just walk by you, and they just sort of look at the elk, kind of weird. Uh, just as you got past the gates and started walking south. Um, yeah. Mm. So. Uh, so if we start going down the road, does it clear out? It does it clear out, or is there always a bunch of people? Um, you know, there's times. Uh, each of those times, you guys have never tried to drop this deliberately before. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's a time where you're definitely alone for a bit. So, fairly soon. Okay. Well, once we uh, don't, can I make a look around at one point and see? If there's we're uh, we're alone. Yeah, there's That's... nobody nobody in sight at all. Probably about fifteen minutes after you leave town. Okay, uh, then you guys want to try to drop it? Uh, oh. yep. As soon as you think that, you can also create a. Yeah. As soon as you think <laughs> that, fall, then you become yourself. Yeah, that was easy. Yeah. Good to have a tail again. Yeah, you. I don't know how you guys balance without these things. That was such a weird experience. Hmm. Yeah, you're walking. You're definitely like uh, riding your elk and, as a lizard. <laughs> That's an everyday scene. Yeah. Then I, I guess at that point, I like we can all just transform back into normal. So like you know, I can. Like, think to myself, it's like, you know, all right, I want to look with my re regular normal blue skin again instead of this awful, awful <laughs> regular blue skin. Yeah. And then I, and then I'm like back to looking normal and good, right? Yeah, you're just you. Yeah. No longer look like a flesh colored crayons. Uh, blue is the regular colored skin for you. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, you guys are all yourselves. You're, you're heading south. And uh, you, uh, there's, uh, there's a fair bit of traffic on the road at this point. Again, all of a sudden, there's a little surge. Um, who's going first? Who's leading? Are you just casual? Or are you trying to seem? What are you trying to seem like now that you're yourselves again? Uh, just casual, walking down the road. I think. Would somebody get the impression of people that are ready to fight, or people that are? You know, used to, they get the impression people are used to fighting, but they're getting ready, ready of a, a impression of alert people or people without a care in the world. Or what, what impression are they getting? Seasoned. Uh, 
I'm See, from my I'm, high vantage point. I'm trying to keep a like perspective on the road, but I'm not making it obvious that I'm doing so. Hey, sorry, somebody else spoke. I think Tamara, maybe. Well, I did not speak. Sorry, if my. Oh, I thought somebody else was trying to speak just when Spence started to speak. Okay, maybe it was an echo or something. Uh, so since I'm up on like a higher vantage point, I'm trying to keep an eye on the road and what's around us, but I'm not really. I'm trying to make it seem casual. I'm not. I'm not making it obvious that I'm keeping it. Okay. Right. Yeah, sure. Um, you can choose performance or stealth just to see how how casual you are. Yeah. <laughs> You're Drew. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so Spalding's obviously keeping a good eye on the road for you. Um, yeah. And and so what what is your what do you guys what's the order here marching order? It's not for any serious reason, but there is a reason. Drew Drew is probably near the front, but not at the front, because yeah. he is a merchant and he has traveled with merchants and he knows kind of how they tend to look when they're. Um, traveling and, and looking out, and he's trying to give the group an appearance of we don't have anything to sell, and we're not we're not high. You're not going to make a lot of money off of us, but we still have the guards that are escorting our our small caravan. Okay, well, Drew can do that fairly easily, but just out of curiosity, he did the performance check to see how strong that. Yeah, effect. let's see how he. Uh, Maybe we'll uh, get off the Someone's got to perform. I can roll a one. Yeah. Who could roll a one? All right. So yeah. So yeah, just, you, you guys, normal. I don't know if you take your cue from, but Drew is just looking like normal traveler. I mean, unless you're, are you guys hiding your weapons like under your cloaks heavily, or are you just sort of walking with them? It's normal enough to walk with them. Yeah, we're not. We're not being secret about. Yeah. Being capable. Yeah, I just have a shield on my back and a, and the my staff across my legs while I'm on. I don't think Kelp and Finn can hide their buttons, but <laughs> <laughs> no, it's as big as you. Shield on back. <laughs> Almost Barry, what's your armor? Uh, Deathly. And 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 Kelp. Uh, mine is flint, I believe. Flint. Flint or. I don't even know what that is. I'm taking looking at a picture of it. Oh, huh, cool. Flint mail. Weird. All right. <coughs> so, you guys um, um, are heading south, and you know, seem pretty casual. Um, you see two, what look like sort of farmer's daughters, one with brown hair, one with red hair, and they smile pretty heavily at Drew, and they cringe pretty strangely at most everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> they, smile, they, they give a, oh, that's cute, uh, towards Bumbleberry. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> one of them has red hair, which you've only seen once in the last, like, two weeks, which is in the tavern and stuff in town. So it's pretty uncommon, right? Oh, cool. So we're getting back into normal civilization. Yeah. Um, uh, um, so, I mean, again, you're just wandering down to Port Lass. So, uh, uh, Drew, if you just do a perception for me, it's not for right this second. So. Yeah, sure. Um. And yeah, so you guys are wandering down. Uh, do you, what do you got for food? Just regular rations? Do you have enough money that you can fill up on rations or you can pull up? Pull up yeah, we have rations. we have leftovers from the bar last night, I imagine. Okay. Yeah. So you guys head south. Um, you see, you know, quite a few, the farmers you see coming north are well off. Mm -hmm. And they look like they're in their good clothes. Um, so you sort of put this together, they may be attending whatever the party was. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, one guy, older guy with gray hair and a hat, he has like a huge bundle of really like spectacular flowers on his back. Just like, and they're each like 
separated by a piece of cloth and stuff, like they're all sort of kept very, very well, but it's like 20 of them. So he sort of smiles at you and he says, uh, he says, oh, uh, do you have any fine ladies you're meeting up with? You? Would you like any flowers? Uh, Drew realizes the salesman when he sees one and says, no, thank you. Okay. Well, these would make quite an impression on the lady, that's for sure. She would, uh, well, this blue one right here, she would, um, she would, she would do just about anything for you. But anyways. Well, Drew, uh, wants to do a nature check. Is that a weird flower or is it just salesman's shit? We've never seen any of these flowers before. Um, okay. um. In fact, they're fairly unique in structure, but not our, not like constructs necessarily. And okay. each one is entirely different from the next. And he, he says, you know, or I got one for whatever ails you back here. But really, the, the ladies, I mean, I mean, you're, I assume you're going to go back to the party at some point. It's going to last three days, right? So. Uh, maybe. Yeah. It's weird so, that we've been there for days and nobody has mentioned a party at all. Yep. <laughs> I go up and like sniff them, uh, like I'm, see if they're like actual food, like or flowers. Um, yeah, they're definitely edible, in the way that any random plant is edible. Um, you feel? Um, he says, "Oh yeah, you could you could get yourself a, a frog lady or something." Yeah. <laughs> have the people who've been going north all been um, human, half elf, or elf? Human, so far. All human. Except for the majority of the region, so outside of the city. Yes, but we haven't seen any non-humans going north. Oh, but you've only seen about ten people, so. Right. So, so statistically, the next one should pretty much be elf or half elf or exotic, right? So. Because <laughs> they they weren't super welcome in that town, and we haven't seen. Well, many. we never actually tested that. We just assumed it. And nothing has changed. Nothing you're aware of, so yeah. to that to that assumption, yeah. yeah you haven't been given any information. That's all. I'm, I haven't, you know. I mean, I don't yep. say. I say no. Yeah, no, but just we haven't we haven't noticed any. No. So, so after the oh, okay, go ahead. Okay, and so. I was gonna say like after they're gone, but uh, if it doesn't sound, I don't think you're done with them yet. No, he just he just uh, he just offers you some. He's like, well, let me know if you need anything, and uh, meet me at the docks tonight if you if you're change your mind all right nice to meet you he continues on um true well after they're gone i say like do you guys just want to go back and see if you can walk in like this and say we're here for the party i Drew says i haven't seen anyone other than humans going north so maybe not yet so more of us are the wackiest bunch that we've seen so far yeah elk lizard <laughs> little well, the elk is a little bit of form. It's a much yeah. more more normal turtle underneath. Yeah. So, uh, Drew, you notice above you. Oh yeah, your nature check uh, revealed that the those are definitely very exotic flowers. You yeah. feel like you feel like there was a type of perfection to them that might be unnatural, even though they're natural plants. Okay. That's happened. You've seen that with trees in markets and stuff, like miniature trees and stuff, where cultivation has brought something to an extreme that it could mm -hmm. be cultivation or it could be that. It's, it's very specialized. So, sorry, I didn't see the twenty-five till just now. <laughs> so, no, it's fine. Multiple, multiple I rolled it. Uh, yeah. Don't worry about it. So, um, um, the other thing you notice, every, everybody who's not like really out of it notices, is. Now this raven comes up above you and just starts circling fairly high up, okay. and uh, it doesn't sort of check you out and leave. And it came from in front of you, so yeah. Came from okay, so it came from Port Last direction. Yeah. So yeah. So it's just it's just it's just like you'd feel like it's watching you like a vulture would, but you're not really. Sorry. It's okay. The focus thing. Um, <laughs> I point. Who would know? I mean, I would know the most about ravens. Yeah, uh, you feel you feel like um, you know they're high. They can be highly intelligent and curious, but this one seems to be definitely as curious about you guys. Um, watching us specifically. Yeah, for maybe ten minutes now. So 
that's when it became okay. a bit of an anomalous, you know, as opposed to them just seeing what's on the road, right? Yeah, I uh, I quietly pointed out to everybody. It's up there. It's about 150 feet, just 160, just floating around, just nice lazy circles. Catches mm -hmm. the thermal, goes up a bit, comes down, but it it moves along with you as you move along the road. So. Okay. Yeah. So um, yeah. Anyways, um, so coming up the road now, you see somebody who. Is somewhere between a ranger and a woodsman. You're not really sure. He has the longest axe handle you've ever seen. It's even too impractical for either chopping or fighting. And it's got an axe head on it. It's sort of like a staff with an axe head on it. And he's just wearing a, a casual green uh, tunic and some, you know, regular clothes underneath that or, or look like his, his good clothes. Um, and walking about five feet behind him is a guy in a blue cloak still nothing alarming except you're alert because of the raven mm -hmm. who has a lot of pouches on his belt and stuff like that and on his <coughs> back he's carrying a, a bundle of some kind of uh, almost an orangish red plant it looks like a, a like a, a wheat or or a, or a grain of some sort but it's, it's a very unusual color and he's but he's walking like deliberately just behind this other guy and this guy walks up and just sort of he looks up the raven for a second he looks at you and he's like Wow, you look like you belong at the party, he says, and he smiles. <laughs> Does he look at the non-human people when he says that? No, he doesn't look... Be uh, no, he just... Yeah, he looks like he looks everybody over, and there's only one human, so... Right? Mm. <laughs> yeah, so... What's it's the human. party for? Oh, it's uh, it's a special ritual that happens every month. You, you, must, you must have heard about it before. No, we're we're traveling, uh, traveling dignitaries. Oh, I see. Did you st did you stop in Aloria? Uh, very briefly. Ah. We uh, yeah. If you, I don't know. <laughs> Actually, did we? Wait, wait. Which one's Aloria? Where you just were. Yeah, that's where we were. Oh, then no, we didn't stop by there, unfortunately. Oh, um, uh, uh, who wants to do insight? I um, I am pretty insightful. Sure. You're also usually on uh, alert, so. Yeah. Um, Eighteen. Right? He says, "Oh yeah, though they they often don't tell strangers about it, anyways. So, uh, uh, they like to surprise strangers at the party. It's sort of part of the fun." So, and he just smiles, and he starts oh, to get over. What's that, Paulman? What kind of surprises? Yeah. Yeah, very big surprise. So he says, uh, anyways, as well. I stood, up, I stood up asking him about the raven. Oh, yeah, that belongs to my friend here. Um, yeah, that's, that. I, I'm Jareth, and this is my friend, uh, Scroll Up. <laughs> and why is he following us? Oh, well, we know. We always like to know what's ahead, and he, uh, uh, Rana, that's his name. Sorry. So yeah, I'm Jer I'm Jareth, and this is Rana, and and, and uh, yeah, we this is how we know what's going on ahead of time. The Raven sort of said the Raven reported something very strange, and now I can see he looks at the elk with the turtle or with the sorry with the lizard on it, and he's like, uh, <laughs> and then he yeah. just, uh, he walks up to the elk. Uh, is it male or female, Frank? Uh, male. Yeah. He walks up to the elk and he just like crushes your chin like that and stuff and just like hits the good spot here. He knows exactly where to pat you perfectly. I'm basically so like purring like a cat but as an elk and be like, oh, yeah, this is amazing. <laughs> and the scratch is very, you guys have both noticed it. It's very strong. His arms are very firm. So it's definitely. Uh, but the axe is very strange, but it, uh, there's nothing else to it other than the fact that it's on, like, why is it on, like, a four and a half or five foot handle? So. <laughs> it's not a battle axe, it's still a woodsman's axe. Anyway, and, uh, yeah, the, the guy behind him definitely has a lot of pouches in this, and says, well, we're going to trade some stuff at the market tomorrow, hopefully. Party time is always where you get the most money, so. So, but, yeah. Is this a rabbit-themed party, can I ask? 
Do you ask that? Uh, yes. I say the, that's what I say. Like, it's a sort of rabbit themed party, kind of. Oh, well, the last few years we've definitely celebrated the, the joy of rabbits and all the great things they do for us. Of course, yes. They are super cute. Are not? I'll bet your face off. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> uh, like this is what Spalding says. Like they are super cute when they're not trying to bite your face off. Uh, uh, Jeru. Yes. Dude, in with all the pouches and the blue sort of, like a, a not a peasant's cloak, a traveler's cloak with a hood up. Yeah. And it's not hiding his face or anything. He he was not. There was nothing strange to him about what Spalding said, and there should have been. <laughs> <laughs> like like he's just like just a half nod <laughs> yeah just uh he's he's very aware of it and it wasn't yeah okay so, anyway, so yeah um, they start to head past you and they're like don't worry about the uh don't worry about blackie up there he just he just watches ahead for us and the bird starts to head off I, and i as they're going i reach out and say oh nice to meet you and i reach out with my hand and try to shake it uh, how? Uh, like, I try to, like, offer my hand up, so it's like, to shake You're not going to imitate what, what, uh, Pedo showed, tried to show, you're not trying to imitate what Pedo showed you, that's what I was just asking. Oh, well, so is that something that I can do just with the hand, or does it have to be a more elaborate motion? Uh, I was going to try to imitate that. Uh, you, you can't physically do it. That was why you didn't right. speak, so, yeah, I just <laughs> wonder if you're going to try or anything, so I just check him, that's all. Uh, yeah, Jareth shakes your hand. And the uh, other gentleman, uh, Rana, he, he, he just shakes your hand as well. And uh, he's like, ooh, that's, that, that's a different feeling. That's cool. <laughs> I have, you, there's not any of your lady folk around, though, or I guess other men folk. That must be, uh, must be a lonely road. Uh, it's the only road I've ever hoed. <laughs> I've been with these guys since forever, and they're the family enough for me. Did you say the only road you ever hoed? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he says, oh, yeah. You write a song about that. He smiles, and he's like, well, I guess if you pay enough money, right? So, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're friendly enough. Um, Drew, you feel like when you see the guy with the cloak shake his hand, and Spalding, you might notice this too, you feel like, have you ever seen when a person who's like a master of like Tai Chi or Judo or anything like that reaches out and they don't mean anything by it, but you have a feeling like there's a lot more there? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's there's definitely something. like a, a wrestling test candidate, so or or some kind of martial arts or well, whatever the equivalent is here. So it's definitely a you know, it's a lot of times you see that sort of flow when a monk reaches out to shake your hand, like a fighting monk, like a, an inventory monk. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, can I subtle cast detect magic while I'm looking at it? Yep. Do you have to stealth that? I can't remember if you have to. You have to roll for stealth. Uh, no, I can just do it without any verbal or semantic with okay. stealth. All right. So, just one second. Uh, we're not going to worry about it right now, but I think it does require a stealth, if I recall. So that's fine. Yeah. No. Uh, no, because it, it requires a uh, subtle spell means nothing. It just happens. Okay. That, that's the whole advantage of it. It takes a bunch of uh, sorcery points, doesn't it? Yeah. I yeah. think it's one per... That's fine, anyways. Yeah, it's it's basically an uncounterable spell. That's the that's, great. that's, that's the purpose of it. I, I didn't have any plans. I was only curious if we knew in the future or so, right? So yeah, no, it, it's, it's uh, situational, but very cool. Oh, yeah, no, it's, 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 uh, yeah, so anyways, you're able to cast Detect Magic, and you, uh, so the grain is magical, uh, his pouches are magical, the axe is magical, uh, the dude's got something wrapped around their waist inside their belt that's magical, the, the guy with the long axe, um, the 
brooch, which looked like just a clip to hold the traveling cloak, is magical. And uh, the uh, guy with the traveling cloak's boots are magical. Hmm. So these guys are kitted out. <laughs> they have about as much magic as you, or I think uh, at this point, I think it's Kelp that has a lot of the stuff. So. Oh, Pedo. Pedo has most of the stuff, I think, but the most stuff, but yeah. So, yeah, the boots, that's the, probably the most unusual thing. You know, it's less common, right? So, staffs or wands or pouches with potions or whatever are not uncommon, right? But And then the grain, but the grain itself is magical, so, yeah. All right, I'll make a mental note of, like, where stuff is on these guys, but I won't, sure. like, do anything about it. All right. So the raven is headed north and hasn't come down very. They called it Blackie, <laughs> and uh, so yeah, and they're just they shook your hand and they're just ready to move on. So. Enjoy the party. Yeah. Always. So uh, after uh, these guys stay away, and like, do you guys just want to go back and check out this party? It sounds like uh, it could be an experience. By the way, I'm not as a DM trying to drive you to it. So. Do we, I don't think I don't think we have any more uh, um, seeds to hide who we are. We do have one more, but I'd say we just walk in as ourselves. Like we don't know what would happen yet, and it could so be we, an advantage to look like new people versus the people who they know were just all over town blowing some shit up. And... <laughs> we're, uh, weren't we trying to show up so they didn't know that we were who we were? Because they would recognize us from the Child Depot. But they already knew who we were. Did like, they? they knew we were from the Child Depot, even though we were in disguise. Mm, who did? Well, think through that. Well, so, like, the Mr. had passed on the information, and someone asked Mr. who Mr. did. Yep. And it could have been the, uh, like, the rogue or the thief that you chased down, but. He, if he knew, someone else probably knew too. Uh, the Mister and Drusilla, which was the uh, the tavern or the inn you stayed at, so those were the two that knew. So she showed it. So yeah, and then um, one of the guys you fought. So oh shit, just a second. Just a dog thing. Just a second. How often in your previous Dungeons and Dragons campaign did you end up on this sidetrack and then sort of go back to the party and be like, don't we need to rescue people? Maybe they'll be at the party. It seems like everyone, oh yeah, you guys can't understand me. <laughs> elk, 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 elk. <laughs> it kind of just seems like everyone's heading there anyhow. We might, we might need to check this out to find what we're looking for. Yeah, that's the closest picture I can get a Spalding riding an elk. <laughs> <laughs> I've been straining. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Is Spalding normally that jacked? <laughs> no. <laughs> Definitely not. The rest is giving me a moose or an elk and a um, lizard together. <laughs> All right. Do you guys decide to turn around? Uh, no, we haven't come to a decision yet. Okay, that's fine. What was uh, driving us to go to uh, this place again? Uh, information on the rabbit cult. Mm. And it was apparently like an enclave. Yeah, we, we were going to go find the enclave of the rabbit cult. And we were leaving town so that they wouldn't 
uh, find out that we were from the Child Depot. If we were to go back to the party, which sounds cool, um, we would stand out as we currently do as likely Child Depot people because we have still seen nobody but humans heading towards this town. Mm -hmm. And anybody who's invited us has been super creepy about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought they were legit. <laughs> yeah. They yeah. all seemed so nice. They did seem nice. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing, that elk riding picture. <laughs> and then uh, also tell Drew where those things were on that guy, in case we have to fight him. You can maybe snag something. Absolutely. I wish I had found out sooner. I would have grabbed it while he was here. But uh, uh, maybe it was a good thing that we didn't. <laughs> but the Raven's yeah. also watching, so we gotta watch just in case we slide a hand. That the Raven might notice too. I Drew looks you dead in the eye and says, "I'm pretty good at doing things without being seen. <laughs> Pre pretty good a lot." <laughs> and Drew. Um, like takes one of the buttons off of something you're wearing and puts it on a different place and then points it out to you afterwards <laughs> without you noticing while keeping eye contact with you. With the 28 sleight of hand. I don't even know if you're able to see that. <laughs> no. I don't think anybody is. Yeah. Nope. To, like, oh, it's can a you... 28. Is, is it possible for you to roll an insight high enough to see that? Uh, natural 20 would, but... Only if it's an auto-success house rule. Oh. Yeah. Is that a rule to play with? Uh, okay. Like, for this sort of situation, would that be a rule? Or... Well, you can roll it and see. Sometimes I do it for really cool. That's yeah. my official ruling on the, on the automatic success. Usually yeah. when it's not combat or something. Or... You, you don't notice it until, uh, until I point it out to you. Yeah, because I only rolled an 11, so. You if, you nat, if you rolled a nat 20, I think what I would do in this case is you would remember him doing it after. <laughs> it, it, <laughs> just in general, the only way you could beat my sleight of hand would be uh, I would have to roll. You would have to roll a 19 or a 20. I mean, I have That'd a plus six to insight, but I just rolled shit. <laughs> and plus 15 to sleight of hand, and I can't roll lower than a 10. Wow. Yeah. Jerude's is... Yeah. He's good at that. That's well, a... no one really knows where their wallet is right now. Like... <laughs> Jerude knows exactly where they all are. <laughs> <laughs> so this is kind of you see, you see complaints sometimes on the subreddits, and you, and you realize that people haven't read the stories and don't know what legendary adventurers are really like, right? Yeah. <laughs> There's like Jeru a, Jeru is a character half, half, built halfway to Marvel superheroes, right? So like, Jeru is a character built for this particular moment. Yeah, that's, level eleven that's, boy. Yeah, level eleven. He is now. He's grown like three inches. His balls dropped. His voice is deep now. He's, you know, totally different guy. So you guys, uh, by the way, don't forget you do have the inspiration whenever you want it. So mm. I didn't sort of go dig it hard deep into the history, but everybody's been pretty awesome. So, so um, yeah, I, I think we can. I mean, it's. Probably a bad idea to go to the party, but it also sounds like a really fun party. All right. So who's uh, voting party? Jury votes party. How does the party? party? One more. I guess we're going to the. I guess we're going to the party then. Never party. Like, I guess our our poor trapped ranger will, poor road will need to I guess stay trapped in Westwood for a while. Well, like we do yeah. know there are guys. Like, could, could I make the insight on whether those guys were in the rabbit group based on 
what I said to them? Uh, well, we were just using Drew's insight at the time, so you can talk to him, or he maybe talked to you, or maybe he didn't. So. You'll have disadvantage, so you're not looking right at. Right. Sorry. Otherwise, it'd give you intelligence see if your memory of the situation was perfect and get rid of the disadvantage, but that seems complicated, so. Yeah. <laughs> Inside is really like looking for that feeling at yeah. the moment. Right. I, I'm going to use my tag to chaos again then. Uh, and okay. give myself a regular roll. You can use it twice in a day? Yeah, well, since you gave me the. Uh, Okay, yeah, that's fine, yep. Yeah. So I can use it as many times as I want as long as you keep refreshing it with the uh, um, magic. Okay. Uh, yeah. so. you, will have to roll, you will have to roll that again, the surge again. Well, so this, I I rolled, so, so it's supposed basically to be the way I cast the spell. And so I, I basically said for detect magic, that's when it would have triggered normally. Um, okay. But so yeah, next time I cast the spell, you can choose to uh, Sturge magic, in which case it would regenerate. It says so any time you can manipulate the force of the chance of chaos to give advantage on one roll. Saving throw. Once you do, you must finish a long rest before you can use this feature again. It says right on it. Any time the DM can have your roll. Hold it. Yeah. Yep, no problem. Okay. So, uh, so this yeah. is insight? With, yeah, with no disadvantage. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I seem to like they probably don't know much about the call, but. Anyway, north as yourselves. Mm -hmm. Never. I gotta go back north here on my map. Since uh, Helm's Hold, you haven't been seen. Helm's Hold to, to Aloria. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you guys uh, head towards Aloria. Um, uh, I mean, you can rush the town, you know, if you know what the situation is. I had the gates somewhere. Oh, I know where. Like, do we, uh, do we hear anything? Do you know already, already, before we approach, I think Frank we should probably turn back into your regular old turtle again. Uh, do we, the moose might be a hold. We call the moose, actually. So. Dwayne, what did you say? Oh, do we hear anything as we're approaching the town? As very rarely are parties quiet. I will turn back into uh, yeah, yeah, turtle please. form and wear my suit. Nice. Your suit? All right. <coughs> yeah, it's a dress party, let's go. <coughs> yeah, I still have my uh, party <coughs> outfit. Are there uh, non humans here? What's that, uh, Finn? Are there any other non-humans here being drawn into the party, or is it just a... Uh... Well, you guys hadn't seen anybody but elves, half-elves, or humans in the town. Oh, check Maybe the... before, before we head into town, we just camp out outside, just out of view of the town, and see if there are any other non-humans who come. Just for <coughs> a little bit. Just looking for one or two. That's much in a circle. That's the new GPT 4.0. They're very, like, eight word prompts. So. <laughs> but I said lizard folk from D&D, &D, so it knew a bit more. Because mm -hmm. it has a bigger database of words, right? So, so lizard folk from D&D &D writing blue up. Simple prompt. Usually, if I wanted to do something like this, I'd be crafting for a while. Um, but yes, do, do we see any? Uh, uh, do we see any non-humans coming up the road? 
any at all. Oh. Um, you do see uh, two half elven uh, women approaching, and they. Um, the. Um, um, the. Uh, uh, sorry. They feel capable, um, but they don't show any weapons or anything of significance, just a couple of traveling cloaks, and you feel like every step they take is within which is like when when Jeru walks sometimes where or again the monks or whatever where every step they take is like landing exactly where they knew it was gonna take three land three steps ago. Does it look and like an army sneaking into town disguised as party revelers? You feel like either there's high capability people for some reason or adventurers coming to town, like people who have have seen some shit. Um, there's nothing military or martial about them that you can perceive. You can do an insight again. Let's see if you get higher than 17. Oh, I'll but, do an uh, insight again. Yeah. It's been a while. Uh, these two women are both just have brown hair. They're they're. You realize that they're definitely half album. So. Yeah. And uh, you remember that this is the capability level of yourselves or others you've fought or seen or, right? Um, so, you know, this is sort of interesting normally there's not such a high percentage on the road normally it's like a one in 50 one in 100 thing depending on how much deep in the wilderness you are so yeah mm -hmm. so it's a high percentage but it's a you know special time so that's always possible right yeah you don't know for sure so yeah um so the the entrance to the town, which you've seen before, if you approach it, when you approach it, um, it's like two sort of like funneling half walls into the uh, a couple of towers with those. I can't remember. We figured out the name of the things on top. You know, for guys to stay. Yeah, that's it. Crenellation things, and yeah. uh, and a big set over the gate. It's just a big wooden gate. Like it's not a gate that would handle a battering ram of any sort. So. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, there's a nicely cobbled road right up to it, which this road, of course, isn't cobbled. And, uh, you know, a couple of guys standing around. You see, notice that there's more people than when you left standing around and more people entering the gate. Quite a few more may be coming from the north than came from the south. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you definitely see these two women start to approach the gate, which is a fair distance off from you unless you approached it. Uh, and, uh, you know, everybody just seems to be fairly deliberately just heading in town like they got an appointment. All right. That's and concerning. Maybe we maybe we camp outside the town that says sleeping in town. Before you see another lizard folk or turtle, those are both in the like one thousand people range, right? <laughs> you know, so definitely like, you know, but you haven't seen any orcs or, you know, half orcs sometimes, which are still fairly uncommon. You haven't seen any... Halflings? Yeah, you haven't seen any halflings. You haven't seen any any gnomes. You haven't seen anybody. Uh, and, you know, that's not that... Like, normally between Waterdeep and the north, there's usually some poorer people of that type. I mean, uh, you know, between there and Mirabar people, there's a coastal road that people with money take. But usually the poorer people are on the road, and there's a bit of a mix usually of, you know, depending, like, Sometimes there'll be a farmer with a, you know, ox, a, you know, and a load of, you know, chickens or something heading into water deep and stuff like that. You haven't seen much of that today. It's definitely like a, an unusually high class of visitor. Yeah. Pito, if anybody wants to know metalize, Pito's off doing something that'll happen between sessions. So. Yeah. <laughs> it was already kind of there. The seed of it was there, so it was already happening, but it's just happening between sessions now. <laughs> so, no pun intended with the seed yeah, of it yeah. there. So, yeah, anyways. So you guys are hanging out, and uh, yeah. You uh, see the, you know, I mean, people at the gate, the guards definitely on top know there's a group of people where you are, but they're not. Yeah, no, we're not. Like, we're not hiding. Yeah, it's we're just, just... giving an idea, perspective. That's all, right? So, 
Yeah. So what do you guys you're gonna just hang out here longer? It's okay. I mean when's the party start? Um it's uh it's late afternoon. You're starting to feel like either it's first thing in the morning or it's an evening thing based on the a uh, lot of people didn't have multi day stays worth of stuff with them. Did some or people, did not? Some people did no didn't, but some people did, but they may have come from further. So Yeah. You know, people weren't carrying six or things of clothing like they don't have a place to live. So I'm starting to wonder if they came from Waterdeep or the feeder towns or if they got off a ship at Port Last or something, right? Instead of here for some reason. So, yeah. And the people from the north, it's a similar mix. So, yeah. So it's okay. You can just about it. Just tell me what you, you do. It's fine. I just was, yeah. Well, let's go in to, we'll ask the guards at the gate. Like, does the party start tonight or tomorrow? What's, we just heard about it on the road. Everybody says we should come here. What's, uh, what's the deal? What's the, what's the haps? To, oh, to... you've never been here before. So, yeah. Oh, you should definitely come. I, I assume you'd come here for the party because, I mean, Can you know. Can you tell us literally anything about the party other than Absolutely. it's called the party? Absolutely. <laughs> um, usually, yeah. well, usually ritual. most of the things, though, are generally if you're strangers or new to town or you're on your first visit, and he smiles because he looks at Spalding, <laughs> who he'd remember, <laughs> remember Spalding had been here before. Uh, <laughs> definitely more than any. Uh, and, and then he looks at like Gorgor Kelp and he's like, uh, Yeah, usually, you know, people, I mean, they come by boat, they walk, they hike, they fly. But, uh, you know, it's, it all happens on the waterfront, but usually we like to save the surprises for strangers the most, but there's a lot of magical lights in the sky, there's fire on the waterfront, there's libations, there's mind-altering spells if you uh, concede to them, there's things that you've, wonders you've never seen before. All the uh, exotic merchants make their, bring their strange things, and then there's a really big moment at the end, but but it definitely is usually a surprise for strangers. So yeah, and uh, halflings. Are there any halflings? Halflings? Oh, we've had a halfling here before. Okay. Looks down at uh, at. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, we've just had a halfling where where like everyone else is. I don't say that. We have a halfling here before. I mean, it depends on you all are welcome. It just depends on how you treat others, right? So. Particular, particular, yeah, yeah, certain others for sure. So, and now if something's suspicious about that, Drew. Yeah. Why is there someone who doesn't like halflings? He said it's all about how you treat others, and then he said certain others, and then he continued on just telling you. Yeah, no, I, I call, I called him out on that. I say, yeah. is there, is there anyone that we should avoid as a group with? And I look over at our blue and green teammates and then i say a halfling listen this is the place where all and he points at his, at his ears which you know are, you realize he's a half elf but he's got long hair mm -hmm. but you saw it in the features anyways and, he, and he just, he's like this is where everybody is welcome it just really depends on who they know and who they've known and you know that's that's there's there's different parts of town depending on who you know and who you've known right so halfling so uh, am I getting like a like a redneck at the side of the road vibes or am I getting like what 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 is he saying? He is deliberately trying not to tell you he's obfuscating like crazy. Yeah, and he's a random border guard and I am me and, and I'm trying to get him to fill it. He's expecting you to either know what he's talking about or he's not gonna tell you so it's fine. Okay, so this yeah. is redneck at the side of the road. I so got it. Yeah, he's got a secret, and everybody he he thinks you might share that secret, and he's not sure that you might know it. That, okay, that's a ten on insight to know that he's not very good at it. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Collectively, uh, you guys know that. So yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. As soon as uh, as soon as the rest of the group is out of earshot, I lean in conspiratorially and say. Should I get him stilts? Oh, yeah. No, no, nobody's going to be mean to him just because he's short. So. Okay. You get a big trench coat? That's not a good reason to be mean to people. Like I said, it's who you know, right? So. Yeah. Okay. 
thanks. Thanks, guys. Yeah. All, All right. right. So we know even less now. <laughs> I don't know. Actually, that's more than you've heard since you came to town. <laughs> right? Yeah. Beyond the rabbit stuff, that is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and he just says for the last moment, but it has been a strange year after all, right? So and he points up to the. Uh, yeah. Not knowingly, or not knowingly, but sort of like you might know, he points up to the spires of the, the cathedral. So. Yeah, I kind of nod, clearly, clearly trying to act like I have no idea what he's talking <laughs> about, but like I'm pretending that I do and doing a bad job of it, like the double yeah. double cross. He, he points towards the gates. He's like, "Have a good time. Try not to, you know, get into too much trouble." So, yeah. Thanks, guys. He looks. Um, is there anybody who whose legs are uncovered? I need to know that now. No, we're wearing pants. Okay, checking. All right. Why are they looking for injured legs? No, I just need to know it in general. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not really about him. So, I just it's more future. So, anyways, yeah. <laughs> Anybody's wearing a skirt, now's the time to declare it. So. Uh, well, Spalding just kind of wears most of the loincloth a lot of the time. Yeah? So are yeah, you... His legs all torn up, then? Yeah. You guys still have your wounds. So. Well, I didn't didn't really take much in the way of wounds from the rabbits. You don't have any damage? Like, what were... Did we have to take wounds from a specific thing? Or... No, just the rabbits, yeah. It was just the rabbits. The one yeah, the, the rabbits themselves didn't hit me. I only got hit by the big one. Okay, they never cling to your legs? Okay. Yeah. Okay, then you're good. So, yeah. Jeru's no, wearing pants. Yeah. Sometimes it kind of itches. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. That's great. So you guys, um, like I said, uh, head in. There's no issue heading in town. Uh, you notice that the everything sort of filtering towards the waterfront and the streets to the left and right where there'd often be stuff going is are, are not busy unless somebody's heading towards the waterfront. So, yeah. So, hey, let's head towards the waterfront. Yeah. So, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's not an issue. It gets more and more crowded. Actually, this is like more people than you thought were in the city before pretty much like ever saw in any one place on the street. And everybody's heading down. Uh, I need to find the map. Why did it move? I hate this. Don't be surprised if we switch. Surprised if we switch at some point. I had the town map earlier tonight. There it is. No, it's really big. Sorry, just roll 20 weird. It has folders now for the maps, and sometimes stuff wanders into them when you're trying to select it. And you don't know where it is. All right. There we go. All right, so yeah, you guys head down towards the waterfront. The um, you uh, you guys have uh, some of you haven't spent a lot of time there. I say to uh, Kelp and that's in there or in Frankfurt. Yeah, you guys should find that guy you talk to and mess with him a bit. <laughs> like if I remember details of that conversation, I could I could bring them up and seem all clever. All I remember is that <laughs> that guy seemed to know a lot of people, but we looked very different back then. Uh, you guys, anybody with the, the above average intelligence has a decent chance of remembering it all. So it was only like two days ago. So just a long time to us. That's all. Mm -hmm. So, 
when you head to the waterfront, there's a main, like, massive pier that heads out, and there's, like, ships just on both sides of it. It turns out to be, like, a U-shape, and they head all the way down. There's, like, a, a little bit of a wall on each side of it, and then on each side of those two U joints is uh, our ships, but they're all fairly luxurious. There's nothing more than sort of half normal size there. It's... Uh, it's uh you know or half uh you know it's there's nothing there no galleons right they're all yachts or larger you know medium sized trading vessels that you know the kind of privately owned thing not a governmental one right sort of thing so or not a huge you know massive undertaking million dollar undertaking sort of thing just a lot of it get, fits what uh, Frankfurt and uh, Kelp found out before which is that uh, you know definitely there's a lot of uh, more um a, a exotic trading than, than bulk goods here so yeah and uh you know along the way there's some smaller piers and uh some look poorer which means rich by any other most places you spent standards and all the taverns are you know well kept and, and clean and there's just like throngs of people and all along the sort of boardwalk getting you see these um these uh bonfire type Buildups. Everybody's been working. People, everybody who comes down almost from the town seems to bring a couple of sticks with them. So they're adding to it. Yeah. There's about eight big sort of bonfire spots along. And you're actually kind of wondering how the pier itself would set on fire if they were actually set on fire, but they clearly wouldn't be set on fire. But yeah, there's like a long boardwalk left and right to the different little, little piers and the great big piers here. And you see that, and there's just throngs of people. There's vendors everywhere. There's food everywhere. Uh, you definitely recognize after a couple minutes, uh, uh, a kelp uh, or not kelp. Uh, um, it was bumbleberry that was down there, right? Was, or was it kelp? It was kelp down there. Kelp. You recognize um, the merchant that you guys were were talking to uh, that had a fine boat that was waiting on something. And uh, Frankfurt remembers his name was Edge. So. But we wouldn't know that. No, no. Just they, these two become quickly, fairly quickly aware that he's down there and he's sort of watching what's going on at the beginning of the U shape pier and just seems to be having a good time. He's uh, in better just clothes than knowing, knowing that he doesn't know who I am, I guess I approach him and kind of like, you know, gesture as to the general party that's going on, just being like, it's like, do you happen to know what's what's going on here, like, good sir? Oh, strangers. He <laughs> looks at you. He's like, oh, yeah, strangers. Yeah, well, you know, it's a party. I mean, most strangers enjoy the party, right? So, uh, you know, lots of surprises and lots of, you know, good things happen. And uh, lots of things you may have never seen before happen. It's, I usually like to leave town before the end of the party, but, you know, I'm not a stranger. How long does the party go on for? Oh, you know, until usually the... So the moon starts to fade, so early morning. Yeah. Then it sort of heads back into the taverns where all kinds of stuff happens, depending. Each tavern sort of has a specialty in the type of party they have after. Some are illusions and hallucinations, and some are for the raunchy stuff, and some are just getting completely smashed. And some are for elves only. He's human. The only time the town separates that way. Party name. And just not the whole town, but some people. And uh, of course, you know, strangers. There's there's always strangers in the street at this time. And we always try to make them feel welcome. Welcome. And he says, uh, oh, oh uh, Kelp, an insight check, please. An insight check? All right. Yeah. He says, so what brings you here to town tonight? Did you come for the party? Or you're trading? Like we have been traveling, and every time that we ran into other people, they were talking about coming here um, well, for a party. And it was so intriguing that we had to stop what we were doing and, and like, you know, come and see what's going on. He says, but nobody was talking about it yesterday, right? I couldn't tell you. We weren't here yesterday. We've just arrived in town. Well, I just meant on the road. 
He's very curious, Drew. Hmm. And we got to keep it a surprise for the strangers, right? So, surprise, he says. And he starts to look around like he's looking for somebody else, but he's also paying attention to you guys. Drew is head on a swivel. Yeah. Uh, perception. 27. <laughs> Anyways, all right. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah, you, I mean, there's like so many people here. It's, you feel like soon you're not going to be able to move without bumping into somebody. Uh, mm -hmm. Drew, you see uh, a younger guy about 16, 17, and he's working the crowd. Uh, he looks like he's delivering something on an errand, but he's, he's, um, he's picking stuff up as he goes. Yeah, I just make sure that I make eye contact with him and uh, without outing him, direct him away from us. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he just turns, like, at an angle and just, like, deeper into the crowd right away. Yep, yeah. just just keeping us un unmolested. He's got a brown hair with sort of a, it's so, it's got sort of like some black in it that gives it a bluish streak, so yeah. And you, you'll recognize him immediately if you see him again. Yeah. Here. Yeah, I just I just watch for him and anyone like that and just kind of let him know that I see them and and not to You see pickpockets from time to time. You see scammers and sellers of uh I wouldn't say snake oil, but you know, sort of overhyping things. The pickpockets, yeah, and... you, the pickpockets you see, he was the only one that was capable so far. Yeah. Everybody else you would have, you know, Anybody else in the party would have probably seen. Him. Yeah, everyone else I kind of redirect the group around him. I make uh, like I I let him know that I know and yeah. uh, let him continue his business. And you know that the others probably didn't see him, so. Yeah. 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 Anyways, yeah. So. We were right. able to take that quick. Let's. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No problem. All right. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Yeah, back at eight thirty. Yeah, it'll be an okay. earlier night, so that's fine. Yep. All right. Yeah.
Aya. sort of stronger, well-dressed, or richer people seem to be more attention. Seems like a higher percentage than a trading community, but you're not sure. Also, like you said, you've noticed that there's a lot of physical capabilities. How do we compare to them in terms of like, if someone were to look at us and think of physical capabilities, when I say us, I mean Kelp and Bumbleberry, and they compare to them. <laughs> They would see the same thing. You don't know the same kind of level of differentiation. You can't. I don't really know how you would tell that. Uh, you can tell high level, medium, and low. So mm -hmm. you guys are all high level. I don't really know what a level twenty, you know, monk, for example, would look like. Not that I'm saying there is one, <laughs> right? What would they look like versus a level twelve, right? So, right? <laughs> you yeah. know, just from, from a matter point of view, what what looks different about them when they're when they're just walking down the street? Both are going to look different than the regular population and how they step and how they hold their body. <laughs> Do we have everybody? In your hearing? Right? Yeah, yeah, sorry. That's okay. So, yeah, um, so you see these like eight or nine, so they said sort of bonfire -like piles, these two big piers, and then lots of small sub piers down here. The big piers are around, this is them here, so I don't have the exact. Smile. <laughs> Uh, 
Oh, it doesn't work. Oh boy. Anyways, <laughs> we're kind of I never forget like at computer. the base, sitting like here and here, sort of yeah, thing. I'm just gonna out along the pier and kind of jumping out into okay. the water, sort of. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to delete stuff. <laughs> I'm, sure forever. I'm, I'm very sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. Little line of people across the top there. Yeah. All right. <laughs> anyway. Real adults right here, ladies and gentlemen. Real adults. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's uh I just always, have, always makes me think of super bad. <laughs> anybody anybody, have anybody, music on? anybody no, remember, I haven't anybody remember that the book with the books in it? It was so <laughs> stupid that it ended up being funny in the end. Uh -huh. Anyways. So, um, yeah. Um, all right. So, yeah, there's definitely, like, a lot of people gathered down here. The beach is a little bit bigger than, or the beach, the, the boardwalk isn't on this map, but it's a little bit bigger than it looks here. But there's these really smaller piers, like I said. And, uh, yeah, there's probably... And uh, yeah, um, people are starting to gather in clusters around the different sort of bonfire piles. And sun is going down soon. There's street food everywhere if you're hungry. You can grab just about anything from any. Any uh, lab. Any rabbit? <laughs> <laughs> Did you make it back? Do you have sound? Flash for a second, but no sound came out. Okay, I'll take you back. Yes, you have not seen anything that rabbit like. You have not seen a rabbit. You have not seen a rabbit hide, a rabbit meat. You have not. There's no general theme. Uh, there's the, not anything the last four o'clock. In a gold, you know, the, a model of the town that's like of the size of a coaster. I feel like somebody spent forever and fifty gold each, but it's like the whole town, <laughs> including the piers and everything. The detail is unbelievable. Is Sam here? Oh, sorry. Oh, we... 
across the Mario. So I don't know. Yeah, I can talk right now, but can you hear us? All right. So yeah, it's uh, it's uh, the Oscar is the shoot that he's ever been in a. People touch you by random crowd. Uh, Tamara says, not well, let's, let me restart so for hearing us. So, um, yeah. yeah. Your mic's off. Uh, you're back? Yeah, you're back. Yeah, there we go. You definitely see the cloak, and then you see the guy with the axe, actually. Uh, sorry, Jared, the cloak, the, with the uh, axe, sorry, and you see, but the first guy you saw was Rana with the traveling cloak, sorry. Well, let's go hang on by that wire. wire. Okay, that's the main one at the, at the base of the U here. And uh, do, 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 let me grab the tool. Boardwalk along here, so these are on the boardwalk. I can't find that color. Yeah, so anyways. The structure sort of further from the wall than this, but anyways. So yeah, um, yeah, there's definitely a, a big crowd here, and you notice, uh, you realize that uh, Drusilla from the uh, Axe to Ground is there mm -hmm. as well, and she's just talking about much to say hello to her. And you sign a pedo or a date. Pato or who? His date? No. Yeah. And uh, as it gets sort of full dark, the crowd gets quiet. You know, some of the town and the other towners. That's what it feels like. I mean, there's no poor people in town, but there's no workers here at this event either. You know, everybody seemed to, different groups would come in and contribute like sticks and bugs. 